My name is Craig Johnson. I'm an Aboriginal health practitioner and diabetes educator. I work for the local area health district here in Dubbo. My people are the Nyampa people, but I was born on um, Wiradjuri land. The reason I got into health because I saw an ad in the paper that were advertising Aboriginal people to be Aboriginal um, health education officers. I was employed by the Western Local Area Health District and I had to go to TAFE at the same time. So I spent three weeks doing health, like at the diabetes unit, and then I had to do TAFE once a week and that was every month. My first job I remember I done stick picking and I used to walk all over a ploughed paddock. This was when I was about 16. But my main goal in life was to get a permanent job. I suppose the biggest thing that, um, that changed my life was when I moved away from my community. I just had to make that, that step and I believe that that move um, changed my life and it got to me got me to where I was. And I owe that to my grandfather and my mum because they instilled that into me at a young age with the work and learning how to look after yourself. Hi, my name's Angie Rose. I work for New South Wales Health, a program that's called AMOS. It's Aboriginal Maternal Infant Health Services. We support mums that are pregnant and eight weeks after their pregnancy. When I was in uh, year 10 at school in Brewarana, we were offered um, some work experience and one of them was my um, nursing at the hospital so I took that on and yeah I really enjoyed that. It went for a month. I didn't actually start nursing until you know a bit further down the track but it was always in my heart to do that. I think we all have barriers in life at some point in time, whatever it may be, education, finances, family. One of my barriers was um, my father passing at an early age and I, I was only 15 at the time so my life actually changed and my siblings, our, our life changed from there and we didn't have the support we did from our family network. and. We had to go off on other avenues and find support from elsewhere. Yeah, it's very important for role models in life, for whoever you may be, and and um, someone to say, yeah, you can. We can break this cycle. We can go this other way. You know, we might go down the wrong track at some point in time, but we can be pointed in the right direction. And it might be your auntie or your uncle or whoever it may be, but they may be the ones that say, hey, come on, you don't have to do that for the rest of your life. You, there's other opportunities out there. Let's, t you know, let's try this. My name's David Carriage, born in Dubbo. I work for Dubbo Regional Council, doing an apprenticeship for uh, Parks and Guards. I wanted to work outside and um, in the community a bit more. In Parks and Gardens, doing a bit of gardening around. That was probably what I wanted to do. So I applied for an apprenticeship. Didn't get it first go. In the meantime, I decided to just um, sort of work and get tickets and stuff for the next year when the next round would pop up. Applied, uh, I had to do a um, skills for trade course, just sort of get ready for the workplace. Yeah, come for the interview and all that, and I uh, didn't get it a second time, but um, got offered a casual spot with the summer crew doing just whip snippering. So I suppose that was my foot in the door. And then the third time around, managed to land the apprenticeship. I'm proud that I'm doing stuff around the place I was born and that. Yeah, it's just a bit of satisfaction in that sense. Especially where I work now is um, in the cemeteries. So it's a bit, a bit more of a sensitive area. So it's a lot of pride working there, knowing that I keep it pretty well maintained. A few role models in my life was um, Glontuff in high school. Male role models growing up and that was good. Um, good influence. I can't ignore mum and that growing up too. It's everything I do right now is to um, make her proud, proud of the man I'm growing up to be. Riding a push bike out to the Narromine Road TAFE and that, bloody in the rain and that while I was working at Macca's. If you want it, you just got to work hard enough to get it and prove that you're the right man for the job. That if it's what you want to do, then you can do it. It's got to make it happen. It's, it's, it's you that makes it happen in the end, it's not anyone else's.
Uh, my name is Dylan Hill, proud Wiradjuri man from Dubbo. I grew up here for 17 years of my life, ventured down to Sydney, made the transition back to Dubbo, actually became a caseworker when I moved home. Then I decided to make a career change and uh, follow my passion in education. So I transitioned to university and now I have become a teacher. So I'm teaching at Arana Heights currently at the moment. So I'm a K-6 teacher. I'm qualified to teach from kindergarten all the way through to year 10 though. I am deciding on whether I want to do a bachelor degree and move on so I can possibly teach year 11 and year 12 in the near future. So I got into education as I believe education is the key to moving forward. Um, I had some great role models when I come through school, people that I really looked up to and people that I still stay in contact with today. So I wanted to be that influential person in their lives, the young fellas coming through school, not just the boys, the girls as well. I want to make an impact in their life and obviously I believe education is where we start and we do that. So barriers that I encountered with teaching, obviously I did my university through Sydney, so I went to a university program at Strathfield called Yarbalinga. So it's where all Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people from all around Australia, we all gathered together in Sydney. We'd meet there four times a year for a week, weekly block. It was difficult because I was leaving my daughter behind, leaving my partner behind. I had to make that sacrifice of missing out on parties with my family, milestone parties, sporting events as well. It's just one of those sacrifices you have to make in the short term to obviously take on the long-term benefits. Resilience is a massive thing that I drum into my kids every day. You need to be resilient. No matter what you do, you're going to come into barriers. It's just about how you overcome those barriers. Uh, having a good support group around you can definitely help you overcome those barriers and stay resilient. Basically, just if you put your mind to anything, anything's really achievable, whether that's following your dreams, like to become a teacher like I did, it's basically just putting your mind to it, having set, set your goals, um, how you're going to achieve it as well, making sure that it's measurable so you can see that success at the end of the, end of the road. My name is Senior Constable Nathan Towney. I'm a proud Radjury man from Gilgandra, New South Wales. Um, I've been in the New South Wales Police Force now for about nine and a half years. I had a bit of insight on what the New South Wales Police Force was going to be like. My dad was an Aboriginal community liaison officer with the New South Wales Police Force in Gilgandra for about 10 years prior to um, moving on to a different job. So I had that bit of an insight and what you can do to help people out in that role. So in 2012, I joined the New South Wales Police Force um, and I was stationed at Redfern in Sydney. I worked there for three years um, with the Aboriginal community. I worked as a general duties officer. I also worked as a crime prevention officer. After Redfern, I transferred to the New South Wales Mounted Police. So I was riding horses around the city. I did that every day, jumped on a horse, went for a ride around the city. I got to meet so many people. When deciding to join the New South Wales Police Force, I was a bit conflicted about whether I should join an organisation that's had such a big history with Aboriginal people. It's, it happened a while ago, it's happening now still. It, it was a barrier to know to myself whether I could do it, whether I'd have the support from my family, whether I'd have support from the community as well, um, working in Aboriginal communities of Redfern and now here in Dubbo. I've had that support from the family and Aboriginal communities. It's quite calming to go to jobs and people realising that they're talking to an Aboriginal police officer. It's heartwarming for me to know that I'm, I'm helping and making a difference in that side. Hi everyone. I'm Scott Fox, civil law lawyer at Legal Aid in Dubbo. I left school, I sort of fell through a few jobs and, and I fell into a job with the New South Wales government at Fair Trading and um, the course from my 20s all I did was want to you know, stay in Dubbo and, and play sport and that was it. So I had no, you know, no inclination to go into the law when I was younger. You know, but as I got a bit older and you know, sort of my life got you know, a bit more straightforward, the law sort of, um, I suppose, came to me. It was a career path that I sort of fell into and I think my natural progression sort of got me into law as well. So I made the decision one day that I wanted to, to try and become a lawyer. So I started taking small steps to, to try and achieve that goal. It took me quite a number of years. You know, I'd say about seven to eight years all up from when I first decided I wanted to get into it to becoming a lawyer. You know, but here I am. Um, since I've, I've become a lawyer, I've never looked back. You know, for me personally, I got knocked back from uni twice before I got accepted into the law. You know, I took a, a, a pay cut and a, I suppose a career change to get a job at Legal Aid as a field officer before becoming a lawyer. Growing up I've 
you know, I consider myself very lucky. You know, I'm a, I'm a Braun Avenue boy, so I grew up, you know, in Apollo Estate, and I was there till I was 21 years old. But you know, there's lots and lots of people throughout my life who've, who've helped me and pushed me in the right direction to where I to, to where I am now. You know, there's probably too many to mention, except for mum and dad and, and my grandmothers. I think those four people in my life, you know, have really, really given me a good grounding, and they really, really encouraged me to, I suppose, pursue my career path, whatever it was. You know, mum and dad always had a sort of a message to me, don't grow up thinking, no, what if? They didn't ever want me to have that regret, and it's something I sort of, I, I still to this day try and do, you know. If you have a goal, make sure you pursue it, take those small steps to try and go forward. You don't want to be old thinking, you know, what if I did this? Um, you know, what if I didn't do this? Jump in, have a go, um, see what it's like. Hi, my name's Brene and I'm from Dark Eye Photography. Dark Eye Photography has been around for the past eight years and was a business that we established as a family to help capture the memories and milestones of our children. One of the barriers of starting your own business and working for yourself is the financial side of things. Am I going to be able to afford to do what I want to do? Am I going to be able to afford the equipment that I'm going to need to make my business a success? And the only advice that I can give you in that is just take one step at a time. Just find one thing that you want to get and tick that box and then move on to the next one. Sometimes when you have people supporting you and backing you, it can help you guide you in ways that you didn't know was possible. Having these people helps to break down the barriers and show you that no matter how hard you try, you can reach what you want to reach and you can be the person that you set out to be. In this business, we've worked with a lot of inspirational photographers who have really helped to guide us and give us tips and tricks along the way as to making sure that no matter what our family is paramount. Being a photographer involves a lot of weekend work so holding it true to yourself and to your family to make sure that at the end of the day your family is priority. If there's any advice that I could give you is to strive to be whatever it is that you want to be. Glenn started off before his photography business as a tie fitter and copped a lot of flack for wanting to give up his full-time job when he had two kids at home and a mortgage to chase his dreams as a photographer. So if there's anything that I can give you and any advice along the way, just don't give up. Even if what you think that you want to do isn't, doesn't turn out to be what you, want, you do in the end, doesn't matter. It's all these different bridges that you've crossed in the way and all of it is a learning curve. So my name's Salira Milson. I'm a proud Radri um, girl from Dubbo, New South Wales, born and raised here. I guess I grew up in Apollo Estate, so just on this block behind us, so Collins Avenue, um, and I'm currently an Aboriginal Community Liaison Officer for the New South Wales Police. I guess, you know, growing up, you're just told that no matter what's put in front of you, you just got to keep going and, and there's something out there. There's, there's some, someone in some place that wants you to be in their, in their um, workplace and, and you will make a difference no matter what happens. From quite a young age I wanted to be a police officer um, and obviously with those dreams come a lot of barriers so you know our, our people over the years have faced many barriers with um, between them and the police so a big part of me was I wanted to be positive in my role um, and, and I guess you know build those connections again between our people and police. I guess that's you know that's what my role models taught me that's what Beck and Nat and you know everyone taught me so that's how I want my kids to look at cops now. They're not just the blue uniform, they're a person too, so. But the biggest thing to me is just never give up, keep going forward. You know, there's people out there, and you might have to look for us, but there's people in the cops that, that want to help you, and they want to put you on the right direction, and they might see that other, sh that shining light in you, that yeah, they might go, that person, you know, our kids are really good, and you know, they're, they're just, I guess, our, our kids are good at what they do, but sometimes the uniform's not for them. But you know what, there's roles like mine that are good for you and you still get to make the same difference. So never give up, one, you know, one step forward, don't take any back. If you have a backward step, don't look at it as that, like, don't look at it as a backward step, but look at it as a learning curve, I guess, to keep going. I don't see myself in a uniform, but I think I'm right where I need to be.